about the vaccine. We have a lot of questions. Uh, yeah. We've gotten so many questions today too, so I don't know if I'll be able to get to all of them. Uh, but let's start with natural immunity versus vaccine immunity. There has been lots of conversations around this. Can you talk to us about the recent reports that were released? Yeah, let's just address that head on. I think it's really important um, to understand what we know and, and the implications of what we've learned just in the last couple of weeks. Um, since the last time I did Facebook Live, there was a, a new study from Israel. There was a study that had previously been published um, from Ohio. And we now have some data from the CDC as well that helps us to have a better understanding of natural immunity and vaccine immunity. So let's tackle both of those. First of all, what we're learning is good news. Um, and what, what we're learning is that the immunity that is generated for many people after recovering from COVID-19 is stronger than we thought. And that's great news because remember, taking a big step back, one of the keys to success at preventing this vicious cycle of variant emergence is increasing the number of immune individuals in our community. So those who are fortunate to have recovered from COVID-19 and have natural immunity, um, that's a good thing. Now, that study, the Israeli study, um, should be looked at as comparing two very good things, comparing natural immunity, which is great, and vaccine-induced immunity. And what they found was that the natural immunity, just like vaccine immunity, varies from person to person, and it also wanes over time. What they also found was that the human immune system is terrific, and that natural immunity it does appear to be stronger than the immunity that the vaccines are able to elicit in patients who have never had COVID. But let the, the uh, takeaway from that article was not, and I'll, I wanna be clear on this, that the, the implications of that observation was not that we should just stop doing vaccinations and allow the virus to spread and generate natural immunity that way. That's a non-viable strategy. It would be catastrophic in terms of lives lost, in terms of overwhelming healthcare systems, in terms of economic impact. There's no question that uh, just pulling off the brakes and allowing uh, the virus to run its course through a community to generate natural immunity would be devastating. So that's that is not the point of that article. The point of that article is to point out that um, natural immunity is perhaps stronger than we expected and that um, patients who have natural immunity and are then vaccinated are in the best possible situation. And why does that matter? Well, we now understand that even though natural immunity is excellent and may be stronger than, than vaccine-induced immunity, because they both wane over time, we need to do things that increase the breadth of immunity against new emerging variants. And we also need to do things that increases the, the length of immunity. And we know that vaccination does both of those, even if you've had COVID. So the messaging, the, the big picture takeaway here is that um, I think we do need to reevaluate and get better at, at assessing the true level of immunity in our community, taking into account natural immunity and vaccination. But vaccination still remains the most effective and widely available and rapidly deployable means of achieving immunity at scale in our, in our community. I wanna ask you a question around this because I know that people are gonna hear this and automatically think I don't have to get the vaccine. Can you talk to us about the risks of getting COVID, just back to the basics of this gamble of you don't know how your immune system and body is going to react. So, so what's the benefit, I guess, of getting the vaccine versus what you just said that this natural immunity could be great, but you don't know what's gonna happen to you, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Let's, let's talk um, just candidly about uh, should I get the vaccine or not? Um, and I, I want to just talk directly to people in the community who are still making that decision. 
and recognize that it is a very personal decision. And we understand that although I truly believe having reviewed literally every scrap of safety data on these vaccines, that at the population level, they are truly safe and effective. At the individual level, for you out there who are making that personal decision, it's actually a risk, personal risk versus personal benefit question. And I, as a, as a physician, every medication that I prescribe has some risk and some benefit, and the vaccines are no different. I think it's really important for those of you who are making those decisions to understand accurately what the risks are and to understand what the benefits are both to you and to the community. And I'll talk about that for just a minute. I, we uh, humans and in our psychology, um, we're prone to not being objective at evaluating risk. It's just hard for us. You know, we all drive every day and, and we don't think about the fact that hopping in the car has a one in 8,000 chance of getting in a fatal car accident. You know, we just don't take that into account. So it's hard. It's hard to uh, take risk into account. But with, I look at these vaccines as tools. They're very important tools for accomplishing the goal of building immunity in our population effectively, rapidly, and safely. And like any other medication that I prescribe, there are some risks. For example, if you've had a Z-Pack, you may not you may not know that the risk of having a fatal cardiac arrhythmia with a ZPAC is very rare, but it's two times higher than having temporary inflammation of the heart after having one of the mRNA vaccines. And we don't think about that. We, we take ZPACs all the time. The, the risks of the vaccines are, are very real. We have excellent data from Israel and from the, the uh, vaccine safety data that the CDC is collecting. And I can say uh, right now that after millions of doses administered, we have a good sense of what the, the, the adverse event rates are, and they're very, very low. Now, benefits. For those of you who are 30, 40 years old or older and have any chronic medical conditions, including obesity, it's important that you, uh, you be vaccinated for your own protection. Delta is different in the way that it affects people who previously we didn't consider to be as high of risk. We're seeing more and more, um, especially men, I'm talking to you guys, uh, men in their uh, late 30s, 40s who are overweight or have other medical conditions that maybe we didn't think about as severe before, who are getting very severe disease with COVID-19. Many are winding up in the hospital. And the vaccine is life-saving for those of you who have those risk factors. And I want to re-emphasize that. For those of you who are fortunate and are not in that position, maybe you're younger, you don't have any chronic medical conditions, you may be wondering, what's the benefit to me? Well, let me go back to the, the battle that we're facing between the variant and this vicious cycle. We are running out of patients. We all know that. We're running out of ICU beds, but we're also running out of Greek letters. And this vicious cycle of new variants emerging is going to continue. Evolutionary virologists are estimating that this could keep going for two to five years unless we interrupt the cycle. And the benefit to you is that we need to rapidly increase the immune buffer in our population. We need to work together to engage, to get as many immune individuals as we possibly can in a short amount of time, while at the same time decreasing transmission so that that pool where those variants are able to um, play host and mutate shrinks rapidly. So that's our plea. Um, I think it, let's just, let's just um, call it at face value. We recognize that some individuals should be vaccinated because it will protect you from severe disease. And many other individuals 
we would we request to be vaccinated because it will help us build up that immune buffer and and successfully stop this vicious cycle.